forgiving, you are setting people free. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Hallelujah. You know what Jubilee means is all debt is forgiven. Everything is forgiven. Hallelujah. We're living in an exciting time. And I can tell this is going to be a great message today because of the battle I had to go through to get here. Getting ready to leave home and trying to save. And what's your password? Shoot, I haven't used my password in a year or two. Where's my password? Oh, geez. It was, so, it was fun. So, uh, <laughs> hallelujah. So, uh, God is really good. Hallelujah. I'm excited to bring my, my excitement down a little bit here and get a little drink of water. And... Hallelujah. I, I really feel the Lord, well, I know, the Lord really gave me a, a message for us today. As I, I've shared that I want to listen to the Lord, what, what does the Lord want me to say, not what a program or an agenda or all that stuff. I've talked with pastors and they lay out their whole pastoral messages for a whole year. I can't, I've tried that and I, I can't, some of it I told you, I was, I'll, we're going on vacation or something. I know I'm going to be back and it'll be right like Saturday before we get back and I'll be speaking that next day and so I'll do a message. So we get home on that Saturday night and I'll read through it and I go, <coughs> I don't feel it. I don't feel the spirit in it. It's a great word. Yeah, we can read the Bible. It's great. It's all good, but I, I, I have to have inspiration. I guess that's what we would call it. And uh, most of my inspiration comes about four o'clock in the morning. As I'm starting to wrestle around, and sometimes I have to go use the, the room, and, and I, I'm laying there and trying to get back to sleep, and all of a sudden, the Lord, I know exactly how, how uh, Joseph felt when he told, it says, in a dream, to go to Egypt. Take the, Mary and the child and go to Egypt. I know exactly how, how, and I think that's how the Lord ministers to me, these things and stuff, so... Saturday morning, at four o'clock, the Lord began to download to me about the the heart of a warrior. It's time to take our mountain. He began to speak to me about Caleb and gave me some revelations about Caleb. And uh, because last week we talked about maturing, becoming the sons of God, and. Not children of God, sons of God. We're all children of God. But, but children have to grow up. And the thing I said last week, it's a sad part in the body of Christ. Majority or a lot of the, the church today are still children. They haven't grown into the maturity that God has called us to. Not to remain as children, but to grow up. Have you ever been around an adult who is still very childlike? And they, they, the things they do and stuff is like, you know, my 12-year-old kid knows better than that. You know, and stuff, and so it's, it's coming to a place of maturity. It's time for the church to grow up and be about their father's business. Our father's business. And we can't do that as children. And so the Lord took me to Joshua 14. I've got quite a, quite a bit of scripture here, but... The scripture is, is what we base our life on. The word of God. It's the word, his word to us. It's the truth. And so beginning in, Josh, uh, in Joshua 14, 6 through 15, which is Caleb gets his inheritance. It says, Then the children of Jacob came to Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Zephaniah and Kittites, or however you pronounce that, you know, I work on these words a lot, but when I get up here, it's a... I'll just call him Ken, okay? Yeah, that just... I, I know Ken. Said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you, 
and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. <clears throat> so he says, I spoke this from my heart. Not what he saw, but from whose heart he knew. And that's what he spoke. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I was wholly following the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years. So he was 40 years old when he went into the promised land. Now here he's before Joshua, and he says, Now I am here 45 years later. That means he's 85. 85. Ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now here I am this day 85 years old. As yet, I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me, just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war. 85-year-old man is saying this. Both for going out and for coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how that Anakim were there. Anakim was giant clans. Goliath and bigger. They were there. And that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave him Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephaniah, and inheritance. Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance of Jacob the son of Zephaniah and Ken, to this day. Because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron was the greatest, was the, the greatest man among the Anakim. This was the, the fortress, the palace of the head of the Anakim. So, Hebron was a mountain of four cities. Four great cities. There were giant tribes, clans in those cities. And an 85-year-old man comes up and says, I want my mountain. I am well able to take my mountain. I'm as strong now as I was then. Oh, I'm just too old. I can't do it anymore. Caleb had the heart of a warrior. A heart of a warrior. I have a promise, and I am going to collect the, my inheritance. My promise that was given to me. He never gave up on the promise. Not looking at how great the adversity was. He didn't care what the adversity was in the land. He knew the one who gave, him it, gave it to him. We have an inheritance right here today. But what do we look at in the culture around us? Oh, it's just way too big. We'll just all huddle in the corner and we will just... This is what happened to the church many, many years ago. The four walls. We've got to protect ourselves because the world is just too evil out there. And so we huddled in the four law walls and became a religious 
institution rather than warriors in the body of Christ conquering the world. That's our inheritance out there. Not in here, out there. We can't look at the adversity that's before us. Your attitude, and I've said this before, your attitude will always determine your altitude in God and life. If you fear you're a failure, you will never succeed. Why would you go to college if you think you're going to fail? Spend out all kinds of money to go to college and wash out. Because you would rather party and do all the other things rather than go to college. And I'm not saying that college is the best place to go, but that's just an analogy. Some of the stuff going on in college today, I wouldn't want to go. But it's, it's the idea is that we focus on what God has for us, where God is taking us, what God is doing, and the promise that God has given to us. Because God is able to fulfill the promises that he has given to us. Jesus asked a question to his, uh, of his disciples in Matthew 16, 13 through 20. Then Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi. He asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that, that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, some say that you're John the Baptist, some say you're Elijah, some say you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But he said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but your Father who is in heaven. The revelation of who Jesus was and is. But we can't stop there. Verse 18, And I also say unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock, I've talked about this, rock is the revelation. Yeah, Peter, Petros means rock, but it's the revelation of who Jesus is, that you are the Christ. The rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Let's, let me say it again. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. Let me say it again. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Should we have a defeatist attitude in the church when Jesus himself said, and the gate, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it? The only way that will happen is if we are children and we give up. The battle's too great. We can't win this thing. Look at what's going on out there. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should not tell anyone that he is Jesus the Christ. He left this place, and that's where he went down. He rode into the donkey, and within two weeks he was on the cross. So here, here's a... A big word I'm going to use linguistically. <laughs> linguistically, okay? For a son of a carpenter and a welder, these, these, these words are... Okay, this is what linguistically this sentence that Jesus may, said <clears throat> in this passage, which is future, perfect, present, a phrase, a phrasistically tense. That's what it this means, Okay? So this is how the scripture should have, we should understand it. Whatever you bind on earth will have already been bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth will already have been loosed in heaven. God's already ahead of us. Who's he waiting for? 
us. Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth, whatever you loose on earth. Here it's actually saying, it's already been bound, it's already been loosed. I'm waiting for you to give the command. To speak the word of God over a situation. To take dominion over the powers of darkness. Because God's already ahead of us. He knows it's going to happen. And I've already set it in motion for you. Now it's up to you. Binding and loosening are always first done in heaven. He's pre- God's ahead of us. But he's waiting for us, the sons of God, to rise up and move forward and take dominion. This parallels the Lord's Prayer, what Jesus said in Matthew 6. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done as it is in your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So he tells us in the Lord's Prayer, it's already done in heaven. Do it on the earth. God binds and looses in heaven ahead of us. He's moving with us and ahead of us, preparing the way. Binding means that we're prohibiting or forbidding the powers of darkness to move. Loosening means that we're allowing freedom to come. So when we're praying, loosing, loosing, Lord, take your hand, uh, enemy, take your hands off of so and so. You have no right, no dominion. The dev- devil of sickness, get out of here. Of disease, get out of here. The devil of COVID, get out of here. You have no dominion. I have 25 copies here of a testimony. Some of you may have went on, I found it, saw, it was on Facebook. Somebody posted it. It's George Alexander Dooley. He was uh, pastoring in 1875 during the Bluebonic Plague. He was losing tremendous amount of people in his church. We're dying all over the place. And it was, just, it was just a dying field. He got the revelation, and I'll let you read the story, the revelation that he could bind and loose. He took dominion over it. And he started claiming, binding sickness and disease off his people, and he did, after he did that, not one of them died. Here's a testimony. of someone that in the midst of crisis, got the revelation that God wants us to have from the beginning. Don't be afraid. We can bind and we can loose. Jesus himself said it. When Jesus started his, it was in his beginning of his ministry, it says he went into the synagogue. He went up to the Torah. And he quoted this from Isaiah 61, 1 through 11. That's, that's the whole scripture here. But it, this is what Jesus quoted from this, the very first part. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to open on the opening of the prisons to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So that's where Jesus quoted that portion of scripture right there so jesus stopped his quote here that he was he was the beginning of the church he was initiating the church coming into existence the church age was about to be birth so he couldn't go forward with the rest of this and he says this has been fulfilled in your hearing this first part has been fulfilled in your hearing We are the body of Christ. We, you and I, are the body of Christ. See, the rest rest of the scripture is the commission to the body of Christ. You and I. So let's go on. What Jesus stopped and will continue on. And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion. 
to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. See, it's saying they. Verse 4, and they, and they, not he, they, shall rebuild the ruin, old ruins, they shall rise up the former desolation, they shall repair the ruined cities. The desolation of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed their flocks. And the sons of the foreigners shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Verse 6. But you, you, who are we talking to? But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. Who qualifies for that? And they shall call you the servants of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. This revelation came to me as I was going through this. We're not Gentiles. Come on. We're born again. I am the DNA of God. I'm God's son. I'm not a Gentile. You're not a Gentile. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, He's our Father. I'm no longer a Gentile. I gave that up a long time ago. I got a new DNA. You got a new DNA. It's God's DNA inside of you. And you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, the world. And in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double Everlasting joy shall be theirs. Who can have everlasting joy? Who in this world can have everlasting joy but the body of Christ? Us. See, this is about us. For I, the Lord, love justice, and I hate robbery for burnt offerings. I will direct their works in truth and will make with them an everlasting covenant. Do we have an everlasting covenant? Yes. Yes. Their descendants shall be known among the Gentiles, the world, and their offspring among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the prosperity whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robes of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks decks himself with ornaments. And as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its buds. As the garden causes the things that are sown to spring spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. Do we really know who we are? No, we don't. But we're going to know it. Caleb's last words he spoke. I haven't put them up there yet. The last sentence that he spoke. In verse, chapter 14, 15. He spoke these words. And when I read these words, my spirit was overwhelmed by the glory of God. Put it up. Then the land had rest from war. We are the end. The world's coming to an end. This is our promise. Are we going to rise up and take our promise? 
This is our Hebron. This is our mountain. It's full of giants. But are we going to let the giants win? This is our hour. Lord, this is our hour. This is our hour. We worship you, Lord. We want our mountain, Lord. We want our mountain. Lord, many of us are placing adversities on our jobs, our businesses, schools, all the stuff that's going on in this world. And there are mountains before us, but right now we declare, by your word, give us our mountain. The world, if it takes away, God will restore restore it a hundredfold. Because we are the promised generation. We are the body of Christ. And we are here in a time to let the power of the Holy Spirit flow through us, to bring transformation and change to to this world. It's time to be the sons of God. It's time to rise up and let the Holy Spirit move through us, in us, around us. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand up and worship. We worship you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We praise you, Lord, for the hour that we're living in. You chose for us to live in this hour. And Lord, we are your people, Lord, and we're rising up, Lord God, to take our dominion, Lord God, in the earth. As the sons of God, every one of us, Lord Jesus, Lord, to bring forth salvations, Lord, to bring forth healings, Lord, and deliverance. Lord, to... To bind those things that need to be bound and loose those who need to be loose. Lord, we bind the powers of darkness. We bind them, Lord God. Who are, con- who are trying to manipulate and destroy people's lives. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's, let's go ahead and go into worship. Those of you that are watching live stream, just spend some time in the presence of the Lord and worship the Lord. Hallelujah.